Okay, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be storing a little bit of a basic water material. I mean, it ain't going to be too advanced or anything like that, but it is going to be something that's going to be pretty good for like any kind of like stylized game you might have, or even, I mean, you can even make this look really good for stuff such as like, crisp, uh, like high resolution games too. But to go ahead and get started for this, you go over to, to where it says project settings. And if it's not up here, you can always go to right here and click edit and then go down to project settings and do it that way. But go up to project settings and you can t probably just type in distance and it probably work just as good. But then go down here to where it says uh, generate mesh distance field under lighting. And make sure that that is selected right here. Now, I've already got mine selected, so I'm not going to select it again because you have to reset the engine when you do that or restore it. And I've already done all that, and I don't want, really want to wait again. So, just make sure that is selected. This is probably not going to be on this, on like the beginning of it or anything like that, but we will have to have this, so might as well just go ahead and do it now. Um, but yeah, that will restore it, just a little bit of a heads up on that. But come down here to where it says content, I want to create a folder within this. I'm going to call this water system. Alrighty. I'm going to create another folder too to put the water system folder in. I want to just so I can separate the stuff that I've done in the water system. I want to do another one called materials all right now within this thing I'm just going to go ahead and create a material along with a material instance but I'm going to call this water system all right and then just go ahead and create a material instance for that as well now for this right here I'm going to add in a now this right here I'm going to just go ahead and add in a color now I just created a constant three vector and you can either add this to it by either selecting three on the keyboard and then left click on it and it does that. Or you can just come up here and create a constant, yeah, a constant three vector or any of the other ones. And now this also works on the keyboard, just a little bit of a tip. It also works, if you hit a number on the keyboard and then left click on it, like if you hit one, it creates a constant, hit two, it creates a constant two vector. 3, a constant 3 vector, and a 4, a constant 4 vector. Just a little bit of a heads up, just in case you didn't know that. But, I'm going to add this to the base color. I'm just going to add, you can probably add any color you want to to it. Uh, I'm going to do more of a darker blue color. Yeah, I'll do about right, right in there somewhere. Alrighty, yeah, I'm, so I'll just go ahead and add this. And I'm going to go ahead and just add in a constant vector. I'm going to use this in for the metallic and the specular. And then add in another one for the roughness. Alrighty, and I'll just do 0.5 for the roughness. And the roughness, all that is, is like the lighting of it or the reflection, I guess you could say. So, um, now what I'm going to do for the, I'm going to go ahead and start off by doing the actual waves, and I'm going to use the normal map, and how I'm going to do that is actually create two different normal maps, or, if I can spell it right, uh, texture, yeah, add a texture sample into it, and pretty much how you're going to create the waves is you're going to have two different textures in there, and you're going to pretty much overlay these two textures and have one texture going one direction and the other texture going the other direction. So it kind of creates the effect of the waves and that's what we're going for. So just go ahead and copy and paste it down there and add a panner to this. And anyone that does not know what a panner is, a panner is pretty much a node that allows you to animate the texture to make it move in any direction you wanted it to. So I want you to copy and paste this and then add it down here as well. Alrighty. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a normally you could add a texture coordinate but I really don't want to use that only because if you use a texture coordinate and you let's say you have the water or whatever and you want to make one side of it longer than the other side it will kind of stretch the image too and you don't really want that you want it to stay relative to the actual landscape that you're on or anything like that so what I'm going to use is actually use a world position node Yeah, so now it will actually use the actual scale of the world that you're in and not just the mesh of the object. So, what, and I also want to add a mask. And I only want to get the X and the Y axis because it ain't really going to have to use the Z axis for anything. And if you ain't sure how the RGB works, which is red, green, and blue. It also stands for X, Y, and Z too, just in case you didn't know that. And if you look right here, you can see on the this little cursor right here, you can see that the red is the X axis, the green is the Y axis, and the blue is the Z axis. But I only want to get the red and green act or the X and Y axis. But I'm going to divide this as well. Divide. And the reason why I'm dividing it is that it's actually determining the scale of the texture. And this right here is actually going to have to be a really big texture. Only because you got to think of that you're using your whole entire world that you're in to scale it. So that's the reason why this has to be a lower. So I'm going to do waves scale. Just add it down here. I'm going to add thousand for now just to see what it does alrighty and just add that in there I'm going to use that same uh, size for both textures too just not, not just one of them alrighty and now for the I'm going to go ahead and add these textures in it um, we, now we got a water texture right here but the way it looks I do not really like the way it looks or anything like that um, you really can't tell right there or anything but I really don't like the way it looks because it kind of distorts a lot of it so what I'm going to use I'm actually going to use a rock texture but the one I'm going to use is actually called the basalt so I'm just going to go ahead and add it into both of them yeah I'm just going to add it into both of those right there alright so now what I'm going to do next is actually add a float Three. So I make float three, just so I can add in the a single one. Well, and that way I can just actually add in a parameter. Because if I was to do a like a constant two vector or whatever and use it, I wouldn't really be able to add in the texture or anything like that. Well, I could add it into right here, but I couldn't on the instance that we created. So that's the reason why I'm doing the make float three. But you go ahead and plug it into the speed right there. And now this one right here, we have to have these going in opposite directions. So if I create this one right here in the speed, I will have to create this the complete opposite of this one. So, I didn't mean to do that. But so now what I'm going to do for this one is actually multiply it. And if you know basic math, it's anything multiplied by a negative number is going to be a negative number. So I'm going to do negative one so that will automatically make it the complete opposite of whatever this one right here is and then I'm going to create it in the x-axis so promote that to a parameter and I will do waves speed alrighty and for this one right here I'm going to do I'm actually going to do something else too I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to divide this and the reason why I'm I'm going to divide it is mm, yeah, divide. the reason why I'm going to divide it I'm only, I'm actually going to divide it by a hundred yeah a hundred because that this value right here actually has to be a very very small number 
So it has to be something like, um, because you also got to think, you go based off the world too. So if it's going 100 units, that's actually a lot on the actual landscape. So it has to be a very small number. If not, you really ain't going to be able to see the waves or anything like that in it. This right here just allows it to where it will divide that by 100. So, you, you know, like, if you did one, that would be point zero one. So that's a pretty small number. So that's the reason why it's messing with small numbers in Unreal is just aggravating. Now, I, I try not to do it if I can't help it. So that's the reason why I added a negative one or divided by 100 right there. So for the speed, I'm going to do it at point four. Because I think one is still too fast. Because that'd be like saying point zero one. Alrighty, so um, and that part right there is done. So now what I want to do is actually I want to blend these two textures right here together. And how I'm going to do that is actually do a blend corrected blend angle corrected normal. So pretty much it's just going to blend these two textures together or the two normal maps together to where you really can't tell the a big difference in it that is it is if you would have looked at it without this or if you would have just added them together you'd be able to tell that there's just two normal maps laid on top of each other but now it kind of blends them together to where it's not going to have that effect on it so that's the reason why I use that so I'm going to do a Latin normal map And you can just plug that into the normal map. But this right here is actually going to be the intensity of it, where you can actually make the make the normal maps kind of stick out or not stick out that much. Alrighty, so that's what pretty much what that does. So now I'm going to promote that to a parameter. I'm going to do a waves intensity. Alrighty, and just kind of stick it down there. Um, that should be about all I would think on the normal. Um, yeah, I think that's yeah, I think that's pretty good. So just go ahead and s apply it, and I'm going to go over here to the actual viewport. And I'm going to add a plane and just kind of bring it up a little bit, and then scale it on the x and y axis, and then add the instance to it. Now you can see right here right off the bat that it really does not look like waves that much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here to the material instance, open it up and just bring it to the side right there. And I'm going to add, refresh off the waves intensity, it should be higher than zero. So I'm going to add it at, I'm just going to create it at one. So that would be like no, like no effect on it at all. Um. Alrighty. So I'm going to do one point two on that, along with the. What does one point five do? Yeah, I think one point two. Little. Maybe one point three. That'd be good enough. And for this right here, I don't think the scale of it is enough. So I'm going to go instead of a thousand, I'm going to do it. Ten thousand. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's good right there. And then for this right here, I'm going to, I'm going to leave the speed at 0.4 for now. The wave intensity to 1.5. There you go. You can kind of see the waves effect, but you can also see the. You can kind of tell that it's just two textures stacked on top of each other still. And that right there will change as we do some more effects to it. But. As far as that goes right now, I think that'll probably be about it. I'm going to delete these right here because I really don't need those. Yeah, see, it even kind of made it look a little bit better too removing those yeah I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right here on the next video I will probably go ahead and start actually adding the water effects to it like the depth and stuff like that but yeah this is going to be a multiple port series as well but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right here and I'll see y'all on the next one